with the Shadow Assistant Mental Health and Suicide Prevention Minister Melissa McIntosh. Thanks very much for your time. We'll get into what we were planning on, but this is obviously a, a story that's kicking off today. Is it at least a conversation worth having? You can grandfather measures, you can do all sorts of tweaks and so on, especially given you have a policy to access superannuation for housing. If you just do that and we increase demand, won't that further skew the property market? Do we need to look at, you know, the overall demand around investment property tax breaks? Thanks, Tom. We certainly do need to look at housing from the whole spectrum of housing, from homelessness to social and affordable housing, to the rental market, to home ownership. And before politics, I worked in community housing, so I know this space uh, quite well. I spoke to community housing providers just last week and real estate agents in my electorate. And the message from the real estate agents is mum and dad investors are pulling out of the market at astronomical rates, meaning there's more pressure on the rental market. And they are pleading for the government not to touch negative gearing because this will only put more pressure on these mum and dad investors. We're not talking about rich people. I'm talking about people in my community in Western Sydney uh, who are now pulling out. And the lineup to get rentals is huge. The cost for rentals is huge, and this is just putting more pressure on people. OK, but just having a look at everything, I mean, if you start carving out elements and saying we won't touch this, that, you're not really having a, a full look at the market. You said it's, it's not for rich people, it's mum and dad investors. Could there be something as simple then as limiting it to, say, two properties? If you have three or more investment properties, you're going pretty well, aren't you? The government, this is the point, the government promised the Australian people they wouldn't touch negative gearing. Hmm. We've had multiple but we're talking next election. Promises. They're not about to do it now. So it would be going to next election. Now, I'm, I'm talking about the discussion rather than whether this is a government pro broken promise. Well, I can tell you what I've, only what I've been speaking to people about, particularly in Western Sydney, don't touch negative gearing. Mum and dad investors are pulling out of the market. Rentals are too high. People who have mortgages uh, in my electorate are really struggling right now and are fearful for further interest rate rises. We have people who have small businesses, people who have two incomes lining up to get meals from our food providers. They are not people experiencing homelessness. This whole cost of living pressure is absolutely real. Now's not the time to be talking about measures that will add more pressure to the market. It's quite extraordinary. As I said, wouldn't be, you'd think, taking place for years. Anyway, we'll, we'll move on from that topic. What about housing more generally? Why on earth do we have a housing crisis right now? We had near zero immigration for the best part of a couple of years under COVID. Houses were still being built and we've got to a housing crisis now. This comes at the end of the coalition having been in power for the best part of a decade. Do you look back on your time in office as a government and go, how are we at a housing crisis point now? Because this is the coalition that aims it right now, right, that owns this right now. It's not, it's not Labor's housing crisis. They haven't been in power for a year. A lot of the housing mechanisms are run by the states uh, and the measures and the, the um, the levers that they have when it comes to housing policy. So the question shouldn't be looking back uh, to the past eras of, of state governments, uh, but looking to the future and how the Labor government is going to work with pretty much all Labor governments across Australia. They're in a unique position to really uh, have some positive impact on the housing market. But I can tell you 1.5 uh, million people coming into the country when we don't have enough supply, and that's a big issue, is around lack of supply. Uh, that is not going to help uh, the housing market. And we know that around 60% of new migrants come into places like Western Sydney. We are buckling mm. under the strain of not having enough infrastructure in Western Sydney, where most people, okay. over 300,000, commute every day for work. We don't have enough housing supply. As I said, mum and dad investors are pulling out of the market and mortgage holders are really feeling the pinch when it comes to cost of living. It certainly goes across multiple forms of government, but it certainly well it strikes me as well that 
Uh, it could have been something with, it was tackled with more urgency in the past. We'll see what Labor actually does on this. Just finally, so in your um, area, if you like, the Coalition wants the number of subsidised psychological sessions to go from 10 to 20. The report to the government said when this was in place, it actually meant a lot of people, in particular lower socioeconomic people, were unable to get appointments as a result. They were being taken up by wealthier people to be blunt. So why is it a good idea? That's a misinterpretation of the report. Recommendation 12 clearly states that the Labor government should not cut the sessions from 20 to 10, particularly for those people who have complex mental health issues. When I am speaking to psychologists, to the mental health sector, to people who are really struggling right now, whether it's through uh, multiple flooding events and fires and COVID and now cost of living, they are pleading with this government to listen and to please reinstate those sessions. We have a, So should it just be for acute needs in, then? We need a plan for mental health in this country. Uh, Mark Butler promised the Australian people that he, when he cut those sessions, when he made that uh, announcement, that he would put in something better. We have not seen that. All that we have seen uh, from the minister is the cuts and then a pretty cruel assessment that this was lazy policy. I think Mark Butler needs to apologise to all the people across our country struggling with mental health right now, that he's saying right. uh, that this is lazy policy. That is not true. Uh, we've made the commitment, coalitions made the commitment, uh, if returned to government, we would reinstate the full 20 sessions, and this is supported overwhelmingly by the mental health sector and people who use those sessions. Melissa McIntosh, thanks for your time today. Thanks very much, Tom.